Hey gang, welcome to day two of measuring the immeasurable. Today we're going to talk about using similarity to measure the height of an object. So suppose you have a tree, and you also have you. And you want to figure out how tall this tree is, but you're not very good at, say, climbing the tree, or you don't have a tape measure that'll reach the top. How do you do it? That's what we want to talk about today. Last time, we said that two figures were similar if they had the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. We saw that the lengths from one figure could be determined from the other by multiplying by a scaling factor. Does that work for angles too? Well, let's go and take some angle measurements. If we were to measure the top corner right here, I would find that on the little shape it measures 100 degrees, but on the big shape it also measures 100 degrees. So they're the same. Well, what about the lower corner? Well, I find that on both shapes they measure 80 degrees. How about if I cut across a diagonal? Well, once again, I find that they both measure the same thing. In this case, 60 degrees. So whereas you find lengths by multiplying by a scaling factor, angles don't change at all. When two figures are similar, their corresponding angles are equal. In fact, the opposite is true, too. If all of the corresponding angles are equal, then the figures have to be similar. And some of you may have learned this in a geometry class. Well, what works for trapezoids will also work for triangles. But the study of similarity in triangles is so important and fundamental that it has its own name. It's called trigonometry, which means triangle measurement. And it's a very useful tool for measuring the lengths of similar figures using angles and right triangles. So if you had two right triangles like this, then there's a couple of measurements on these triangles that are going to be useful to us. A base angle called theta, which is a Greek letter, the length of the base across the ground, who we'll call b, and the length of an altitude or height above the ground, who we'll call h. If we have two right triangles with the same base angle, then they have to be similar. They both have a 90 degree angle, they both have the angle theta, which means that the missing angle has to be the same, since the angles always sum up to 180 degrees. Since these two triangles are similar, we can set up the ratio from last time. Big H over little h has to be big B over little b. Now with a little bit of algebra, I can cross multiply and rearrange to get capital H is equal to little h over little b times b. Now notice that little h over b is just the slope of the line the hypotenuse makes with the horizontal. h is the rise, b is the run, and so you're looking at rise over run. Well that slope, the slope of a line that makes an angle of theta with the horizontal, is called the tangent of that angle. So instead of writing h over b, we could just write tangent theta. And so now we have a clever formula that allows us to find the height of a triangle if we know its base and its base angle. Even better, the value of tangent of theta is programmed into every scientific calculator, so we don't actually need to measure the scaling factor on our own. So let's summarize this result. Given a right triangle with a height of h, a base of b, and a base angle of theta, then the height is always equal to the tangent of the angle times the length of the base. So how does this help us with the tree problem? Well, let's imagine that you know that you're, say, 20 feet from the tree. And for whatever reason, you happen to know the distance from the ground to your eyes is 6 feet. So you look up to the tip top of the tree, and you find that you're looking up at an angle of 58 degrees. Well, that should be enough to figure things out, because really, we're talking about a right triangle. It's got a base angle of 58 degrees, and it's got a base of 20 feet, the distance from the tree. That means that the height is given by that cool formula, the tangent of the base angle times the length of the base. Now my calculator says that the tangent of 58 is 1.6, so when I multiply these together, I get 32 feet. So the height of this right triangle is 32 feet. Now if I take into account the 6 feet I'm standing above the ground, that gives me a total height of 38 feet. And so we figured out the height of the tree. Now you might be asking, this seemed like it would only work if you knew 
the height of your eyes, and if you were standing completely level to the tree. So what if you didn't have that information? Would you suddenly be lost and unable to measure the height? Not a bit, because you could also measure down to the bottom of the tree from wherever you're standing. So say you look down to the bottom of the tree and you find that this is a 17 degree angle. Well now it's just a double right triangle problem. Working with the triangle above, we already saw that its height was 32 feet. Now if we focus on the triangle on the bottom, it has, upside down of course, a base of 20 feet and a base angle of 17 degrees. So its height will be the tangent of the angle times its base. According to my calculator, the tangent of 17 degrees is 0.3. So when I multiply those together, I get 6 feet. So once again, 32 feet on the top triangle, 6 feet on the bottom triangle, that's a grand total of 38 feet. One other question you might be asking is, how do you measure these angles? That's certainly not something I'm prone to do, is to figure out, oh, I'm looking up at an exact 17 degree angle. Well, that's because you don't do it by hand. You have a machine help you. A hypsometer is a device for measuring angles of elevation and declination. Now clearly, these hypsometers are pretty cutting edge. They're electronic, they've got lots of bells and whistles in them, but you can make a fully functional hypsometer using nothing more than a couple of basic school supplies. You'll need a protractor, a straw, a roll of tape, some string, and a paper clip, and a washer or two. And so here's how you put these devices together to make a working hypsometer. Take the protractor and the straw, and tape the straw to the straight edge on the protractor. This is going to be your eyesight, the thing you look through to make measurements. Now take the string and thread it through that little hole in the crosshairs of the protractor. Tie one end of the string to the paper clip and the other end of the string to the washer. Now whenever you pick up the hypsometer, the heavier washer is going to be pulled down by gravity and the paper clip will snap up to the top there, allowing the string to move freely. And that's it. This is our hypsometer. If you're holding it completely level with the horizontal, then the string should cut straight down through the 90 degree mark. Now if you angled the hypsometer upwards, gravity's still going to pull that string straight down so that it's no longer going to rest at the 90 degree mark. In this case it's going to rest at the 61 degree mark. And we're going to be able to use that measurement to figure out the angle that we're looking up. Because it's not a 61 degree angle. How do we find it? Well, Imagine dropping a line back to that 90 degrees. So the angle that we're looking at above is nothing more than this angle right here, the angle between 90 degrees and the straight line, straight down angle formed by the washer. So the hypsometer is reading 61 degrees, and so the angle we're looking for has to be 90 degrees minus 61, or 29 degrees. So let's summarize that. The angle of elevation, the angle you're looking up through the hypsometer, is the complement of whatever the hypsometer reads. So now that we have a tool for measuring angles, let's take a look at the basic process for using it out in the field. We can find the height of any tall object using a map, a calculator, a hypsometer, and the scaling factor idea. The basic steps are as follows. Determine a location to make your angle measurements. Mark this location on the map, and then use the map's scaling to determine your horizontal distance from the object. Next, measure the angle to the top of the object using your hypsometer. Find the tangent of that angle using a calculator, and multiply it by the horizontal distance. That's the vertical distance from your eyes to the top of the object. Next, measure the angle to the bottom of the object, and repeat, you'll find the vertical distance to the bottom of the object. Then add these lengths together if the bottom is below your eyes, and subtract them if the bottom is above it, and you'll find the height of the object. Let's take a look at an example just to sort of see how this process works. Let's see if we can figure out how tall the Hotel Alex Johnson is in downtown Rapid City. We can get a pretty good view of it from the Main Street Square, especially if we stand right at the corner between the big posts. Here's a view from the big posts. So how will we figure out the height? Well, the first thing I've got to do is pull out my map and mark locations on it. I'm standing right here at the front of the square. The sign on the Hotel Alex is right here. So using a ruler, I can measure my distance on the map as being 50 millimeters. Now I need to use a scaling factor. 
and that's down here. If I measure this distance with my ruler, it's 14 millimeters, but the map says it represents 100 feet, so that's enough information to make a scaling factor. We'll take 100 feet, the large scale distance, and divide by 14 millimeters, the small scale distance, and so we'll get a scaling factor of 7.14 feet per millimeter. Now that we have a scaling factor, we can take the scaling factor times the small scale measurement to get the large scale measurement. 7.14 times 50 will get me 357. So what does that mean? That's my horizontal distance. I'm standing 357 feet away from the corner of the Alex Johnson. Now that I know my horizontal distance, I can take the measurements above and below with my hypsometer. If I look up to the tip top, my hypsometer reads 18 degrees. Well, technically, my hypsometer actually reads 72 degrees. I have to subtract it from 90 to figure out my angle of elevation. Using the trig formula, the height will be the tangent of the angle times the horizontal distance, 357 feet. My calculator says that the tangent of 18 is 0 0.32, so 0 0.32 times 357 is 114 feet. So that means there's 114 feet of displacement above my eyes to the top of the hotel. Now, I take my hypsometer and I look down at the bottom of the hotel. In this case, I only get a one degree drop. So I use the trig formula again. The tangent of the angle, tangent of one degree, times the horizontal distance, 357 feet, gets me, well, the tangent of one degree is about 0.02. So when I multiply that by 357 feet, I get about seven feet. So there's seven feet of displacement below my eyes. If I add these two results together, I find that the height of the Hotel Alex Johnson is about 121 feet. So now it's your turn. I'd like you guys to split up into two-person teams and to work together on the measuring height with angles worksheet. You're going to have to make a hypsometer, which you can keep, but don't forget to return the calculator when you're done, please. Thank you.